recording? Yes. Okay. Gonna show you a few more of my latest orb pictures and then some old ones as well. Now, I've been getting a lot of these holes that seem to have things that look like tubes running into them. So, I put a lot of them into one album, which I called Black Holes and Strings. I mean, that is the talk that I hear a lot of the scientists talking about. Are there black holes? I think there are big ones and microscopic ones. Because there's a law of correspondence that, as above, so below. What is in something very far away is also in something very close up. And so I want I think I'm looking real close up at light. And maybe I'm seeing what the people who, who call themselves string theorists believe to be accurate, although they don't seem to have a lot of proof visually. I think I have a little proof here because it certainly looks like a black hole and a string and our tube. Now, just want to show you some of the pictures I've taken recently. That's part of the tube right here that I'm pointing to with the arrow. And there's just a a black hole, but it seems that in the center there's com something coming through, but it isn't poking out just yet. And there's just some of the black holes that seem to have something in them too. And see this one, it looks like it's coming from it or going into it. The little tube. There's another one. They can be very colorful too. More holes. Let me see if I get back further. This might look better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, there's one going into a black hole. There's the holes. Some of the holes you don't see anything but blackness there, like in this one in the middle. But the one above it, you see the little, the little area that's lighter colored. And here's two tube-looking things coming out of or into a black hole, it looks like. And it looks like there are, <clears throat> these two tubes are going into the same black hole, but from two different directions, either side. I think that from listening to different scientific uh, programs that I like to listen to about quantum physics, that there is an argument out there between scientists as to whether the string theory has any validity. Some people think that it does and others think no. I kind of agree. I think it does. I think we're all all connected and how we're connected may be something that can be seen visually under certain circumstances that I have somehow found out how to do with uh, taking these pictures. Now I'm just giving you a theory. It's my theory. But one person's theory is as good as another, and I think it's, it is good when you have pictures. I'm always looking under Google Images for any picture of string theory or whatever, you know, that I like to see if there's anyone showing anything similar to what I'm finding and never do I see anything similar to my orb pictures but that doesn't mean it's not out there it just means I haven't found it now see that string 
goes across a black hole but doesn't go in it. It goes around and sort of um, goes into a not the first biggest black hole but the second smaller one. It's like there's maybe there is one look at that one right there above that that seems to have gone down into that black hole but one of the strings that went across went over the edge and into a different black hole. Oh, and I tell you what makes black holes. For me, when I put water or saliva on the glass that I'm using to get the shiny spot off of to film, water always makes big black holes, which the water quickly evaporates and I see the black hole diminish and go into being not a black hole anymore, but a, what I call a curved line ball. It looks somewhat like an X at the beginning of it, and I will be showing you that after I get done with showing you these black holes and, and strings. I see that string seemed to have wrapped itself around this black hole and then just continued on down without going into it. It's a strange world, this quantum world. Here's several strings of different colors that have, they look like they've sort of sunk down as they came to where this black hole is, but they didn't go in it. They went bypassed it. And that is that condition again right here. And sometimes, like with this one, it looks like the string itself is actually curving around in a spiraling way and making bl the black hole. Because, see, you can follow it around and it continues and then it turns black, but <clears throat> when I lighten it, there's a, it's still black there. People tell me <clears throat> often that what I'm filming is something that's in the glass. And I know sometimes I do film some things that are always the same with the same piece of glass. And I look in the glass with the naked eye and I see little imperfections inside of the glass itself. But even that makes me think, what is glass? Glass is made from crystallizing sand or something like that. I'm not real sure, but it's, but it may be some part of the crystallization that did not turn into glass. So it's a particulate or something like that they call it. It's a particle of something. And it's still interesting to me because even if it's water on the surface of the glass, it's showing me something that is in water because this method I'm using seems to magnify whatever is on the glass and even the things in the glass and the things in the atmosphere around the light source where if I move my camera I keep seeing a different scene. It continues on. But, you know, there's different parts to it. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, the, the the little black holes will look like an eight. This one doesn't look quite so much like it, but it will curve around, and then you see it cross over the middle. Well, like this one starts right here and goes around and then around again, like as if it was making an eight. The infinity <laughs> number. Now this, this one that's getting ready to go down into a hole. This is, this quantum world is just all mystery. I mean, I don't think anyone can say they fully understand it. 
I think it's important, though, that we try to understand light and get the whatever messages we can get from light, because light is what everything, including ourselves, are. Oh, these aren't so descriptive here. Okay, I'm going to go exit here. And now I'm going to go back to the library and go to the one called Curved Line Balls. First of all, I'll show you this one, then I'll go back. These little things. These are what is in the water when it makes a black hole, and the black hole dries, and it turns into a, a thing that looks sort of like an X. You can kind of see that X right here. But then the X grows. I see it, you know, forming these two balls that are real close to each other, and the balls are filled with curved lines. So I call them curved line balls. And there's, it's in water, which that's hydrogen. Maybe I'm looking at the hydrogen atom or something. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But these, these will show up in other orb pictures. And this one, they just happen to look like they're in a cocoon. <laughs> so here's one emerging out here. This, Not that that's what is so, but, you know, that's just what it looks like. Now I'm going to start at the beginning of this and let you see how I see it looking like an X. Oops. See this right here? This is the beginning of the two curved line balls right next to each other. And often there's three or maybe four right next to each other. And you'll be seeing some pictures of that. But they first look like uh, they look like an X. They don't continue to look the same way. Nothing really seems to do that. Nothing's always the same. But here's part of one that's that's formed right here. Now, can you see the two big ones here? That they can be real large in the orb, the way I, uh, I filmed them, or they can be real small. One time when I did put uh, the piece of glass, which was just a little teardrop piece of glass, I put it in my mouth and got saliva on it, enough that it was running down the glass. And then just with the naked eye, I looked at the glass, through, you know, and I saw all these little tiny X's. I thought, wow. And then I kept watching them with the naked eye, and the little X's turned into these curved line balls. And when you see the curved lines, like there's some right there, you see that these curved line balls, they just get all mangled in with all other kinds of things. Now, you have to train your eyes to see them, but there's to the, the X thing would be right there where my arrow is pointing. And there's another one that's forming right there. Those are a little bit hard to see unless you're used to looking at it like I am. Here's some that are looking like an X right, right now. And they still have a lot of the black of the, of the, like I say, water makes a black hole and I see it dissipate and the hole closes up and becomes the X. And the X becomes the curved line balls. Now here's several several of them already made big balls that are all kind of jammed together. And you can see them in this area. And here's some in this, rather I was real close in on the orb here. And you see the two right in here and two right here. Two little balls close to each other. Now, other people, get this. This is not my photograph here, but someone else, I forget who, but um, see the lines right in here that are curved lines? I think that was part of 
partly like what I get because let me see you show, show you another view of this Ooh, that's not showing up too good but it's right in here let me see if I move my camera around will it show it any better sometimes it won't show it as good as I can see it but there's curved line balls in this and this person gets a lot of veils in their picture their pictures of orbs they take them in the sky mostly and at night I think but they get a lot of veils and orbs here it is again and this is a real good example let me see if I can bring it up where you can see it oh the Newton lines I hate them those little Newton lines but it's right here there's three curved line balls that are touching slightly or they seem to be slightly close to each other and um, here's another picture of that last picture wasn't mine though it was from the other photographer of orbs so I'm seeing it repeated in other people's work only I think I get a better definition of it than they do because I'm filming the way I'm filming and see it there's several of them in this one and here's two that are starting right here right there one two right now they look more like the X but it's on its side so here's two and maybe there's another one going to form uh, on the upper and lower part of this but see it's not it changes all the time as you're watching it but I only get one view of it once I click <laughs> I click the picture but I think this would have turned into four or more here it is again now if it's some people who say this is just something light does in glass when you shine a light on glass this the something and they give the ability of it to the glass like it was a glass something well known that the glass just does I've never seen samples of this I mean I've, you can go to caustics and you can see exactly what caustics looks like there's a lot of examples that they'll show you in Google Images but they never quite look like an orb and show these lines around the edge of the orb and and the different things that I see in it this this is not caustics I don't believe it is although some people think it is here's two of the balls and two right here but they're not completely formed in some pictures I have they're pretty much formed but I catch them in all stages well, that one just over to the side of me. Now this one has several, several of them in it. Kind of fuzzy looking, but I can see several. Here's one really big one. Here they are. And the, this one that I went in so close you can't even see the edges of the orb. And there's more things than just these curved line balls. There's all these little circular things. And even, I don't know if this picture captures it good, but I will bring it in close so you can see there's little tiny circles. And there's this circle that has a dark center. And there's these circles that cross over each other making interference patterns. And I think about... Uh, watching different scientific programs where they talk about the double slit experience where they're shooting photons through two slits and how they make an interference pattern and it makes a mark on a backboard that shows wave action and I think well you know here they are interference patterns it's like a pebble was dropped in some water and it started uh, started the little wave around itself and there are several drops into the water and, and the waves start interfering with the uh, waves of another pebble drop. Now this little object right here, that was my very first artifact 
And what I mean by artifact is something that's stuck in my camera. It's always there in the same place on the page. And if that place is not too dark, if there's light, uh, light colors around it, it'll show up, the artifact. My latest artifacts are this and this. This, these, there's four of them. I, I don't think I showed the fourth one. But it's like bullet holes. There's one, they'll be in a lot of my pictures exactly like this. All kind of even at a diagonal. If you look at it like, you know, crosswise. And that's the latest artifacts. There's several artifacts. There's one, let me show you this one right here. I call it a little fairy. And it's usually pretty dark, but sometimes it, it's light enough that I can make it out. To, and it looks kind of like a little fairy. Not that it's a fairy. I don't, you know, I just call things by how they look to me. I don't really know what it is. I don't know much about the, the camera I'm using even. Now, this one day I got a big black hole with nothing in it. I used to look at light uh, with no piece of glass, so just looking at light, squinting my eyes, and a big orb would present itself, kind of like those satellite dishes. It would just loom up, and it was very floppy. It, mo it moved all the time. So I had to sort of train my eye to kind of keep it open so I could see it better. And with my right eye, I could look at it, and with my left eye. Closing my right eye with my left eye, I was seeing a big black hole just like this one. And I noticed it every time I looked at light, with my left eye looking at the light, I could see the black hole. Now, I'm going to show you with my finger here. I could see also a flap that looks like my fingers are looking here that opened and closed with the opening and closing of my physical eye. So I thought, well, maybe this is my third eye. Because when I use my uh, left eye, I saw it on the left side. But when I use my right eye, I saw the opening and closing of that flap on the right side. Also, when I shut my eyes at night and touch my eye on the toward my nose, to the, the part of my eye that's closest to my nose, I will see a bright ring of light flash inside my head. In darkness, I see. I see it every time. It's, it flashes and only stays a few seconds until I touch that part of my eye again and press just very lightly. And also in the middle of my nose, well, it would be about there, you know, like, I see it on the right, I see it on the left, and I see it in the middle, which I would call of my nose, I guess. And um, I see a little ring of light, but it's very quick. It flashes a ring of light and then goes away. Don't know what it is. More of the little curved line balls. More. Oh, this is showing I only have three minutes on this video left. So I will keep on showing them to you. And see how they get so many, they just get all crushed together, sort of. You can see them rather well here, in this one. And I've shown you that one. You can see them, very many of them here. Again, this is another photograph from another person where they sort of sh are showing it looks like those curved line balls. Which, and I might have shown you this one. Oh yeah, it was Diane. Her name's Diane. And she gets that too. My name's Diana, my first name. Diana Grace, and there's the, they're very colorful here in this one. And 
that didn't jump too good. Once I noticed them, when I first noticed them forming like this, I went back and looked at a lot of my older photographs of, of orbs, and yeah, they were there all along. I just hadn't really paid a lot of attention to them, but they were there. So I have many examples of that, but I only have one minute left on this video. I want to show you, and I might make a second one. Let me go back to the library. I want to show you falling off colors. My best example. If I can find it. I put so many albums together that I... I lose myself in my pictures all the time. It happens all the time with me. I have too many orb pictures. I have no idea, but probably thousands. Here it is. It's this one. Go back. You see how these colors just fall over the edge of this orb? You can just, it's just, it's like in that movie with Robin Williams, What Dreams May Come where he's walking through a world that's like paint that you just brush your way through. Anyway, I thought this orb very beautiful. And see colors fall off the sides of orbs. From one orb to another. And that's a good example of one. 30 seconds. Well, I'm going to say goodbye because this video is going to end. I don't know my camera good enough to know how to set it for a certain length of time for the video to be. One of these days, I'm going to learn all that stuff. Anyway, this is the Dove Lady, and just wanted to holler at you. Over and out for now. Bye-bye.